My name is Johan Falk, and I'm going to tell you about a game called Altrix. Uh, this is an adventure game, uh, which means that uh, you have an adventure moving around in the lands, drawing adventure cards, meeting friends and foes, finding magic items, leveling up, uh, gathering equipment, and eventually becoming strong enough to defeat the evil sorceress. Everything you would expect from a standard adventure game. It's a cooperative game for one to six players, and I think that 10 years is a pretty good limit for playing this game, depending on whether you play with your, only your friends or also with grown-ups. Playing time uh, depends, and varies depends on uh, which mode you play the game in. There are two things that set this game apart from other adventure games. Uh, one of them is that it's made to be fun both for kids and for their parents. The rules are easy enough for, for kids to uh, play the game, but the choices and the story and the well, mechanics in the game speak to adults as well and present interesting choices for them and challenges. The other thing is that you don't start by reading the rule book. Instead, there's an introduction campaign booklet that you open up and follow instructions from, uh, making the game turn out more or less in a kind of legacy game. This means that you can start playing within a few minutes from opening the game box. I'm going to have a look at this. Uh, I'm going to present, tell you how the game works, uh, the, the basics of it, and uh, also tell you a bit about uh, more perspective of what happens in the game. So this is an, is an excerpt from the introduction campaign booklet. There are five chapters and one epilogue that you play through. And once you've played through all, the, all of those, you have all the rules for the game and can play again with all the rules uh, from the start. Every chapter has some uh, game story that grows uh, with each chapter. There are some instructions for the players, and there's also rules for each chapter uh, introduced. If we start here, in chapter one, uh, players should go from the home village to the cadet school to give them a warning about something bad that happens on the fields. Players are instructed to take an, uh, a character sheet each, fill out their names and things like that. Uh, they get three dice each uh, and hit points, mana points, something called flux crystals, which is the currency for the game. We have some predetermined equipment, uh, a magic ability, and one of the players get a uh, chapter card uh, reminding them where they're supposed to go and when the next chapter starts. And uh, they also take out uh, the adventure cards for the fields and the hills. There are different uh, sets of adventure cards for each region in this game. Then there are a few rules before starting to play. Uh, we see here uh, each round is uh, divided into five phases. Two of these are used in chapter one. We have movement at sunrise and at noon you draw adventure cards and resolve them. So minimum rules for the first chapters. Uh, players move along and uh, when they move, I should say, you roll three dice and you check how many equals you get in the die results. So you have one, two or three steps you can take at, at most. Um, later in the game, you can affect this, uh, this movement is in some ways. Most of the adventure cards uh, result in some kind of skill check, which uh, is uh, handled in the way you would assume it, it does. Uh, other games other cards um, present other events or things that happens, uh, good or bad, to the players, one of them or all of them. Players can share adventure cards if they are on the same space on the board. Eventually, they reach the cadet school, which ends the first chapter, and chapter two starts. Uh, the players take the introduction campaign booklet again and read the next part of the story. This is Captain Samus uh, telling them of, on th uh, about some things going on. Some new rules are introduced, um, ranged weapons in this case, and also an important rule about leveling up. Whenever you use a skill or make a movement roll and get a triplet, you can level up if uh, the roll is higher than your current skill value. And it so happens that at the cadet school, you can also uh, train using ranged weapons, which means that you can roll a lot of dice at the same time and uh, hope for a triplet high enough to level up. Uh, players take out the city cards, city adventure cards, and off they go towards the University of Magic. 
uh, when they get there, uh, the third chapter starts. Uh, the Arch Chancellor Ursula tells them a bit more about the story. She tells about uh, the flow going through the world called flux, controlling life and adventures, and how this sometimes forms, forms solid crystals uh, called flux crystals. This is a currency of the game, but it's not. It is not only money. It's also used for controlling your own fate, altering something that has already happened in the world. In game terms, it means that you can sacrifice a flux crystal to re-roll one of your dice at any time, or you can sacrifice six flux crystals to select the outcome of a die if you want to. Whenever you roll a, a straight, you touch this flow and get a flux crystal, and if you exactly match uh, the required value for a skill check, you make a perfect roll and get three flux crystals. Ursula also tells about the evil sorceress and our power that is growing. This introduces some kind of meter here, which is slowly filled by these dark crystals. Every night you take a crystal and move it downwards, and when it hits the bottom, something bad happens. And then the next night you take a new uh, crystal and continue filling this up. So it's an increasing pace uh, that uh, pushes the players towards the end of the game. So the game goes on, uh, new uh, chapters are unlocked, new regions, new cards uh, are added. Uh, you can train uh, other things at other locations on, on the board. Uh, at the home village you can buy equipment from uh, at the general store. And there are well in increasingly difficult and hard uh, regions unlocked on, at the board. Taking a step back, looking at what's happening here, uh, there are... Um, I would like to describe it in two different ways. You have adventures happening, uh, which speaks mainly to, to the kids. Uh, what will happen on the next adventure card? I, I defeated the giant. I made a perfect roll. I leveled up. I found this magic sword or magic item. Things like that it always brings cheers around the table. But there are also tactics and strategies going on. Uh, at a um, kind of direct level, you have to figure out how should I grow my character in the best way, fastest way? Where should I go? How, how could we cooperate to do this in a good way? I haven't told you about quests. There are quests as well introduced in the game. When you go between these cities or, or locations, you can uh, get rewards for that. And that also requires that you coordinate the group in some way. Uh, but you can also coordinate by helping each other, uh, moving together. Uh, so I have better chances of defeating enemies or uh, taking care of other dangerous things happening. Uh, you can share equipment, share uh, flux crystals, and also uh, how to use these flux crystals is, uh, is a very important part of getting a good result in this game. To get a good result, you need to listen to what's happening on the game board and, and follow that uh, to set the sail in, in the right direction. Uh, maximizing the income of flux crystals is also something that you need to think a bit about how to, how to do. And uh, above all this, uh, uh, or outside of all this, you also have to look at this uh, scale uh, being filled up. Uh, it pushes you towards the evil sorcerers. Looking at the end game, uh, end of the game, uh, when the players get to the tower of the evil sorcerers, uh, they have to face one of the uh, trials of these sorcerers by themselves. So these are individual trials in a difference from uh, uh, the adventure cards. Uh, players have to face these alone. And they're, of course, very nasty. If they all succeed in, in defeating these uh, or conquering these trials, they defeat the evil sorcerers and win the game and get to read the epilogue. This unlocks the final uh, rules in the game which uh, includes also uh, new character sheets to use in your next game. So not all players play uh, the same stats or the same skills from start. So these are more diversified. Some other things are introduced as well. And um, that's it. If uh, I, I could talk a bit more about things, there are ideas for expansions for this game, for example, a number of expansions that uh, brings variations to the game can be expanded in many different ways. I could also tell that there's a lot of calculations going into this game. Uh, I, I kind of like math and I've done some, not only statistical calculations for this, but also computer simulations of the full game to have a lot of data to go on when, when balancing the game. 
yeah, I hope you like this. If you have any questions or ideas, uh, you can find you can write a comment or you can just uh, follow the link to the project page and, and read more there. Thank you.